Miss Susan Ecovero. In my previous video, I talked about the agape love of God, which is the genuine, sacrificial, unconditional love of God that does not place conditions on people. Today, I am going to talk about the love of God among church workers. Every church worker has a divine spiritual assignment to do God's work in an effective manner. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 states, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. As believers in Christ, the Holy Ghost sheds love into our hearts to give us the divine ability to love others, as we should. Therefore, love has its origin from our hearts and not from our flesh or soul. Love is a spiritual force and not a mental attitude. Let me talk briefly on how to love. I mean, how must we love as church workers? Number one, we must be born again. If we must love as commanded by God, we must first be born again, meaning we must first be regenerated or saved, meaning we have to give our lives to Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior. Many church workers today are doing God's work without being born again. If you are a church worker watching, first of all, ask yourself this question. Am I genuinely born again? If there is doubt in your heart, you probably are not. So you must first of all settle it in your heart before you continue with your service to God. Some church workers say, oh, I'm born again. I go to church almost every day. I do my spiritual work, I do activities in the church. Coming to church every day, running around doing church activities or even being born in a church building does not make you born again. It doesn't. We must first be regenerated or saved, meaning we have to give our lives to Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior. Let me talk also a little bit about the spirit of man to give some light into why we must be born again. The spirit of man is essentially the place that God resides when you give your life to him. Your spirit is the organ with which you communicate with God and the spiritual realm. The spirit can also be referred to as the inner man, the heart of man, or the spirit of man. Your spirit is made of spiritual material that cannot be seen with the physical eyes, but only by spiritual perception can you perceive your spirit. Your spirit is your life force that keeps your body and soul alive. Without your spirit, your body will be dead. Your spirit receives the breath of God at creation and regeneration or salvation. When you become born again, you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, receive the divine ability to worship fellowship and communicate with God. Your spirit becomes a container for God to stay and walk in you. Your spirit man is where God abides. Therefore, it is impossible for God to stay in your spirit if you are not born again. When God comes into your spirit, he deposits his light, his wisdom and his love, and then he gives you his ability to love correctly. Without God's Holy Spirit, you cannot love as he has commanded. Therefore, don't try to love God or people around you by your own power. You must depend on him to help you. Bottom line, you must be born again as a, as a church worker. Many church workers all over the world today are not genuinely born again, and therefore they don't perceive God's light in their spirit. This is the cause of so many problems in the church today. Nicodemus went to Jesus by night to clarify this issue about being born again because he was genuinely concerned for himself. It was a serious issue. In John chapter 3 verse 1 to 6, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, my friend, dear Christian worker, you must be born again. When you become born again, your spirit man receives illumination. You receive light from God's Holy Spirit. You begin to love God and His people the way you should. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12 states, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. We ought also to love one another. Friends in the Lord, let us love one another as commanded. Let us put aside every strife, every rancor, malice, backbiting, gossip, unforgiveness, hatred, sedition, and every works of the flesh. Let us help each other do God's work in God's house as unto God and not with eye service. We must love God and his people and his work without eye service. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6 to 7 states, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So we ought to love God with genuine love, unconditional love, sacrificially, not placing conditions on people to love us back, not making people to jump hoops to love us back. Let us settle it in our heart that as a church worker, you will do the Christian service to God and not to men, loving God from your spirit and not from your flesh. Remember, love originates from the spirit man, not from the flesh or from the mind. When things are not right in your church, find a solution to the problem. Be a solution to the problem. And don't be a part of making it worse. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't be overzealous and injure people's emotions, thereby driving them away from the church. Sometimes as church workers, we tend to be too zealous doing our work assignment Christian activity with zeal, but not with divine knowledge. We have to do our spiritual assignments with zeal and divine knowledge. When we do that, we step into God's will for us and we become effective in our divine assignments. Paul was speaking in Romans chapter 10 verse 2 regarding zeal and knowledge. He said, For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. We have a zeal for God, but we don't have knowledge. We don't have wisdom. We want to exercise zealousness without wisdom, without understanding, without uh, divine knowledge. That, does, that will not work it. We have to marry our zeal with our knowledge uh, and understanding and wisdom according to how God has instructed us to do it. We don't want to step on people's toes in the church. We want to be a part of their healing and restoration. Therefore, Christian service in the church requires some things. For you to be effective, number one, you must pray at all times and before every of your spiritual assignments. Ask God to help you do whatever you have to do. Without God's wisdom, your work will not bear fruit. And we all want to bear fruit in our Christian assignments. You will bear fruit in your assignment in Jesus' name. Number two, be sensitive to God's spirit per time. Be obedient to what he tells you to do per time. Because he might say, go this way this time. The next time he may say, go this way, we have to be soft in God's hands so he can mold us and use us. 
Number three, we must fast from time to time. Fasting helps us to see God in his true light and help us to follow instructions. It makes us soft in God's hands. It makes us pliable so that he can use us for his glory. I love what Bishop David Oedipo always say. He says, God is not a user of men, but a blesser of men. Number four, we have to ask God for humility of heart. Whenever you are serving in your church, it takes humility to show the love of God. In Acts chapter 20, verse 18, Paul speaking, he said, Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Sometimes our spiritual assignments in church may be challenging because the enemy won't always want to throw that in our wills, but by the power of God we are always victorious by humility and love. Therefore, uh, because church is a place where people come with life's problems and need help to solve these problems, uh, these people must receive edification when they come to church and not be worse off than when they came. If we as church workers understand this, then we will position ourselves for God's love to flow through us to people, to reach the people by His grace. Beloved, there is always a blessing attached to your spiritual assignment if you do it in love. So from today, decide in your spirit that you will carry out your spiritual assignment in love no matter what it takes. God is love and we must walk for Him in love. There's no other route to it. We must obey Him to the letter. May God bless you as you do your Christian work in Jesus.